Okay, here's our first contextual question. This anecdote here shows, let me zoom out, shows the floor plan of an exhibition hall at Nambo, Nampo Park. All right, so it's an exhibition hall where they hold exhibitions and people can exhibit their products or their businesses in a hall, a big hall, all right? And what you can see here is that all these little cells here, so all these little rectangular cells are stands or tables in the hall. Okay, so we're in plan view here, we can see doors, exits and entrances on the side right and here's a tea room uh so it's a plan view and each one of these little rectangles that is numbered here is an exhibition stand or a table for you to exhibit your business or your products all right and they say in the text at the top there uh the distances are given in meters so what they're talking about here is these numbers here, 4, 4,5, 4,5, 4,5, 4,5. Those are distances in meters. All right, so each stand has dimensions and it's numbered. All right, there's number one at the bottom, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 to 17, and 18 to 21, and 22 to 26 at the top there. All right. Okay, we've got toilets in the bottom right hand side as well. I hope you guys understand what's going on. So it's an exhibition hall. You walk in and you have a look at these uh, stands. It's like a flea market kind of set a setup where each space, there's someone selling things, but it's an exhibition hall. So it's a, they're probably promoting their business um, in this exhibition hall. Okay. Okay. So there's the plan of this contextual question. Number one, nice and easy. You know me, we start nice and easy. Now guys, I want to get through this as quickly as possible because we're still going to try that question that we ended off with last week, Thursday. I don't want to do it first now because then people are just going to throw stones because they're going to say, you can't put the hard question first. So we're going to start with these easy ones and then move to the hard one at the end, but we've got to move fast. All right, determine the real approximate distance from the edge of stand 10 to the edge of stand 17. The real approximate distance from the edge of stand 10 to the edge of stand 17. So that's this is what we are talking about. All right. There's stand 10. There's stand 17. And we're talking about the edge. All right. So from there to there. Anybody in chat? Anybody? Somebody. <laughs> you, want me, you want me to zoom in? I'll zoom in. Speak to me, guys. I need the distance. Remember these little markings here, the 45 and the 45 and the 5 and the 4. Those are all distances in meters. Emmanuel, there's my somebody. Oh. Sorry, Emmanuel, I muted you, I think. There we Anybody? go. Hey, somebody. 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 <laughs> you, I'm writing you. I'm good, thanks. And how are you? I'm good, so I'm good a, man. Oh, so, we look, so we're looking for the distance from the, the, the two lines, basically. Yeah. So those are the two stands, stand 10 and stand 17. We're at the edge of the stand to the edge of the stand. So it's the internal edges there. So I've drawn a little dimension arrow to show exactly the distance. Okay, so, so what we have to do is we have to add up the all of the 4,5s. Then it will give you the distance. Mm. All right, so what do we get? So basically you can say 4,5 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 4,5 times 6. Excellent. That will give you the grade, the the a ball, uh, the total answer being twenty seven. Excellent. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. Thanks very for being. Much, sir. Thanks for being somebody. Thank you. All right, there we go. That's the approximate distance from the edge of stand ten to the edge of stand seventeen, twenty seven meters. I hope you guys can see that. So what we did was we had to uh, count. Whoopsie, gone too far. We had to count. 4,5, 4,5, 4,5, 4,5, 4,5, 4,5, all the way along. There were six of them. 
six blocks each with a length of four comma five. So we had to ooh, we had to add those all up, and we got a total length of twenty seven. Yes. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Question two. Given that the ruler measured distance from the edge of stand 10 to the edge of stand 17 is nine centimeters, determine the scale of this plan. Ooh. It's a common question, isn't it? Given that the ruler distance from the edge of stand 10 to the edge of stand 17, the one which we just measured, the measure with a ruler is nine centimeters, determine the scale of the plan. I'm going to give you guys two minutes to do it on your own we've covered this before i'm giving you two minutes on your own you're going to do this on your own you need to provide the scale in a ratio form please we should be able to do this now we've done it two or three times already i want to give you two minutes for question two let's see what you come up with Oh, manual speed there. Hope the quality is good. Good speed. Hope the quality is good. We need good speed and good quality. Good speed and good quality. That's what we're looking for. Checking that everyone's working. Tando's eating ice cream already. Yeah. Oh. Got his ice cream already, Kia. Yeah, can you believe it? Not even the end of the lesson, they got ice cream out. But that's a good sign. It means that the weather is clearing up. Sunny days are coming. Yeah, it's a good sign. It's a good sign. One is to 4.5. Everyone's, everyone's getting the same one as Emmanuel. Hmm. Even Fatima is also getting. Same one as a manual. So for a ratio, we need the ruler measurement to the real world. Okay, ruler on the left, real world on the right. Ruler, we measured nine centimeters. I'm writing units for now. On the right, we have 27 meters. Hmm? That should be right. Everyone happy with that? I'm going to delete this real ruler and real. All right, so we've got nine centimeters is to 27 meters. Now, ratios have to have the same units. I've spoken to you guys about this. So 27 meters must be converted, all right? So 27 meters times 100 is 2,700 centimeters. So this should be 2,700 centimeters. Now, Let me go back to chat. Mm. So these people are all getting one is to four comma five. I'd love to get you up here and ask you how you're getting this answer of one is to four comma five. I think you guys simplified the ratio as it is with the meters and the centimeters. So you still need to take it a step further. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's changing now. Um, Lini, I think you must log out and then try logging again. See if that works. Or uh, Kia will type in a little message there to help you with uh, the black screen issue. So. We got same units now, we can continue. We need to change this nine to a one and do the same to the right-hand side. So how do we change nine to one? We divide it by nine, right? So we divide this by nine and we're gonna get one centimeter. That, that's what we want. What we do to the left, we do to the right. So 2,700 divided by nine, get the calculator, it must work for you. 2,700 divided by nine, 300, there we go. That's better, that's better. You don't have to write the units now because they are the same and it's these are, this is the correct ratio. So one is to 300, it's the same units now. That's what we want. Okay, so this question of, 
determining the scale of a map is a common one. Just remember, you need a ruler. You need a ruler uh, measurement. All right. So you need a ruler measurement and you need a map measurement. Those are the two things you need. Please remember that. Okay. All right. Let's move on to question three. The exhibitors, this is Matrix, come now, step up. Here we go. This The exhibitors rate for a four meter by four meter stand is 22,942. What kind of a exhibition is this? 22,942 for a four meter by four meter stand. Yo. It's crazy. Beryl states that she must pay exactly 25,000 for, st for stand 26. Is her price correct? Now, what on earth are we going to do here? <coughs> four meter by four meter stand is 20,942. She says for a for stand 26, where is stand 26? Let's have a look at it. Oh, stand 26. Whoopsie. Come on now, stand 26. Where are you? Oh, gremlins. Got load shedding issues in the software. All right, hang on to your horses, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to restart this engine. Hang on to your horses. It's going to take a short, short while. And five. Four, three, two, one. There we go. All right. So stand 26. Where is stand 26? Here it is here. Stand 26. So Beryl says for this stand, she has to pay 25,000 Rand. But a four by four meter, where's the four by four meter? Oh, it's not even on yet. It must be somewhere else. For a four by four meter stand, you have to pay 22,900 and something. But for this one, stand 26, <coughs> you pay 25,000 Rand. Is that 25,000 Rand correct? If a four by four meter stand is 22,942, what on earth do I do here, ladies and gentlemen? Well, let me just draw a little diagram to help you here and bring stand 26 down to you. Okay, so here is stand 26. It is four meters by 4,5. There is stand 26. Okay, that one costs 25,000 Rand. A four by four meter costs 22,942. How do I check if this is right? Anybody out there? Matrix, come on now. What can we do? What can we do to check this? Come on, Retrix. Where's Ben? Is Ben on tonight? Ben has been sitting quietly. Come on, Ben. Ben, are you out there? Yes, I'm um, yeah. here. Ben, uh, you've been mm -hmm. sitting quietly, staying out of trouble for a long time. Come on now, it's time to step up. Yes, I'm trying to like, understand the question. So for a four by four meter stand, I'll draw it underneath here. A smaller one. This costs two, two, nine, four, two. Does, should the top one cost 25,000? How can we compare these two things? We've got to compare apples with apples here. So how can we compare these two things? Obviously, when the people make this price, it's for the area of that stand, eh? Surely. Yeah. Yeah. So that 22,942 is for the area of that stand. So how can we compare? I'm not going to say, I don't want to say too much and give it away. I'm, I'm giving you a clue already. Do you calculate the area of the shape? All right, let's try the area of the first one, the four by four meter. 
and that's going to be four times four, which, which gives us 16 meters squared. So for 16 meters squared, we get, it's 22,942. The area for the second one is four meters, four comma five. What do we get there? All right. So now we've got to relate the monetary value to this area. How could we do that? Because everyone should be paying the same amount per unit area in this hall. It's not like everyone, gets, some person has to pay a little bit more because they're near the toilet or something like that. Everyone should be paying the same amount per unit area. Kachisa, I see your hand. We're going to give Ben a chance. So I know this guy can handle this. So how do we relate this area to our RAND value now? So we're trying to get the area into rands. All the rands into area. Yeah, one of the two. So we could either do um, how many uh, meters squared per for one rand, or you could say how many oh, rands okay. per, per meter squared. Uh, can you divide 22,000 with 16? All right, so if you divide 22,942 20, divided by 16, this will give us a per square meter value of 22942. How many one or how much? Or one square meter. So 1433,88. rands per one meter squared. Now we're going to do or use this and say, should barrel get the same value for money she should she should get the same value for money for every square meter that she has shouldn't she so we should yeah. take we should do what now ben we should check this so we've got a per square meter price is beryl getting her um it's the same value yeah. what do we do now with this per meter square price um what do we do with the value? Yeah. So we got to go take this to Beryl's side now. So Beryl's got 18 square meters worth of area. And she's mm -hmm. saying, I should be paying the same price per square meter as anyone else. My stand is 25,000. Is it right? Well, so we should check uh, how much Beryl's uh, side is for the 60, for the 26. Yes. All right, so we can apply the same thing. So we can say, take Beryl's Rand value, which is 25,000, and divide that by 18 and see what she gets. It's uh, 1,388,89. Well, it sounds like it's not the same. All right, so this is what barrels getting per square meter. So verify showing calculations whether barrels price is correct or not. Now, if I was barrel, I would keep my mouth shut because it looks like she's getting, she's paying less per square meter than the other people. She's only paying 1,388, everyone else is paying 1,433 for a four by four meter stand. So she should be keeping quiet, but barrel does the right thing and she says, no guys, this is not right, isn't it? It's not right, eh, Ben? Yes, it's not. That's not right. So you're going to say, verify showing calculations whether Beryl's price is correct or not. So you'll have to say at the end, is her price correct or not? No. Beryl's price is incorrect. You can even say lower than what it should be. All right. Now, Fatima has done something interesting. I think what Fatima did was Fatima took this uh, per square meter value and she went and multiplied it by 18 because if, if barrels should be getting the same per
per square meter price. Thanks, Ben, by the way. Thank you very much for your help. Um, then if you multiply this by 18, you should get 25,000. So Fatima went and, and worked it out and got a value much higher than 25,000. It was 25,809. So she took this per square meter price, multiplied by 18, got 25,909, I think. And obviously that's not correct. So you could do it that way as well. But thanks, Ben. Thanks. They're not easy to, to see it straight away, but we've got to compare apples with apples here. So either we're going to say how much area for one rand, or we're going to say how many rands for one unit of area, which is a square meter. Okay. Um, yeah, I put Ben on the spot there, but I know you could handle it. All right, moving on. We're going to check uh, this little easy section. Oh, come on now. This little easy question after here. Hmm. This thing's giving me trouble tonight. All right, guys, hang in there before we do question one. Next question. I'm going to restart the engine again. The car engine is cold tonight. The car engine is cold tonight. In fact, I think we should move straight on to that hard, difficult question. But before we do that, let's take a break. It's time for a break. Can I hear please from the matrix tonight? Matrix, how are you feeling now that trials are just around the corner? Is it reality is hitting you hard? Is it like, whoa, this is real? Or is it business as usual? Matrix, talk to me. What's it like with trials looming and coming soon? The reality of the end of your school career is it starting to hit home now. Matrix, where are you tonight? There's Gachiso. Okay, right, so just check your your screen there. The 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 screen there. Yeah, you're gonna have to turn your speaker off first before you speak to us. Otherwise, it's going to do that. Okay, let's try again. Try again. Is it okay now? Is it okay now? A little bit better, but you can still hear me in the background. Uh, yeah, it's doing it a lot tonight. Don't worry. Um, I saw myself to sleep because of the prelims. <laughs> too long, not too long. Not too long. Don't be scared. We, just one more minute. A couple more minutes. Stress. It's from Leslie says stress. It's supposed to be stressful, and then you know, stress can do two things. Number one, it can, it can. Uh, hold you in place and make you crippled and put you on your knees in place or stress can motivate you and into doing something about it so <laughs> he's like yeah no uniform sure you guys don't get to wear uniform that's interesting obviously it's not stressing as much oh, it's the reality that it's coming to an end now hey the tricks of the school that I'm teaching at are saying counting down the days where they don't have to come to class anymore. So they're looking forward to that. I'm sure all my tricks feel like that. They want it to end. We've been taught enough now. We're ready for the exams. Bring it. Let's get it done. I'm sure you guys feel the same. You're ready for the end now. Tired of this school thing. How many left until the end of high school? Yo, can you believe it? It's incredible that you've come this far. Incredible. Oh. All right, let's have a look. Let's dive deep back into that cold water, all right, where the um, the sea beasts live. Let's have a look and see what we have in this question that we looked at in a Thursday. I said we'd come back to it because we need to. Um, we got to deal with this thing. We can't just walk away from the difficult ones. We have to deal with it. Now, as far as I know, we were down here at question five, right? So let's go back up and let's read the context again. This is a plan for a house, okay? We answered some questions about the house, blah, blah, blah. We filled in that dimension at the top there for the bathroom, all right? So that red number there at the top is the bathroom wall. We had to work that out, we filled it in. Then they asked us to 
Yeah, in question five, calculate the total area that must be tiled. And we look at the contextual question. I'll zoom in here a little bit. It said the kitchen, the bathroom must be tiled. The floor tile dimension is 500 meters by 500 meters. I drew a little diagram on the right. When buying tiles, you must save 5% more to cater for breakages. We all know that. A tiling company charges 8,186 and nine cents for labor. That's just labor. And you can get the tiles at 240 per box. So there's labor and tiles that you go into this job. We may use the following information, area equals length times width. We know that. And then it says, note, not, note that all items like bath stoves, cupboards, et cetera, are movable. Uh, when tiling is done in spaces, they will be replaced. So what that means is all these appliances in the map that you see will be removed. The tiles will be put down and then those items will be put back in. So what that's saying is do ignore all the appliances and fittings you see. Pretend it is a blank space. That's what they're trying to tell you. Okay. Question five said, calculate the total area that must be tiles. And we did the calculation. There it is on the right hand side for the bathroom and the kitchen. That is the total area that must be tiled. Now I'm going to bring this answer because we will need it. So I'm not going to go over it again. We will need this answer to carry on with the question. That's where we are. Those people that are new here and are thinking, what is going on? We are going back to a question we did on Thursday, which is on uh, maps and plans still. So we're going back to a plan a question that we had where we are starting to uh, incorporate finance into the question now. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Question number six. Here we go. The building manager made the statement that 150 tiles are needed to complete tiling for the kitchen and the bathroom. Verify with the calculation whether his statement is valid or not. Is 150 tiles needed for this job? Remember, we're doing the kitchen and the bathroom, and that area we worked out is over here. <coughs> do we need 150 tiles? How do we work this out? Now, I've put Ben in the spots, and he handled it pretty well. Anyone else out there that'd like to give this a go? Similar question, actually. A little bit, little bit different, but same kind of question than the way they worded it. Uh, anyone out there would like to give it a go? Anybody? Anybody? Somebody. Somebody. Oh, come on, Anybody. Emmanuel's, already had, Emmanuel's already had a turn. Anybody out there? Oh, I think everyone's still reading it, trying to work it out. All right. Let's read it again. The manager says that 150 tiles are needed. Where's my little diagram? Maybe that's confusing you. I'll bring my little diagram down because this is where this is going to actually come into play now. There it is. There's a tile. <laughs> Tomorrow, so we're tiling a kitchen and a, a bathroom. And the area for the kitchen and the bathroom is here, 39,64 meters squared. They want to know, and this is a tile that we're going to use to tile this area. The tile is 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. They want to know, will 150 tiles be enough? Because someone says it is, we've got to verify if it's enough or not. Will 150 tiles, there it is on the right hand side, be enough for this area? Come on now, anybody. I'm giving you guys fact clues. You're pointing at numbers and coloring in things and stuff like that. So it's not going to be like at an exam. You're going to be on your own. Just you in the dark waters with things swimming underneath. Come on now. you got to swim. Anybody? Kajiso. Now, Kajiso. Kajiso on the line. I hope your speaker is low. I am not sure if it's a... It's a little bit Is in the it background. Okay now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's still here, but it's okay. Okay. So I think we're supposed to say uh, 500 times 500. To work um, out the area the area of the tile. Yes. All right. Should, now, if we say 500 times 500 millimeters, that's going to give us lots of square millimeters. Is that what you want? Uh, maybe if we convert. Yes, let's convert first. Always convert first. So how do we convert 500 millimeters to meters? 
uh, millimeters to meters. I mean, we divide Far. by a thousand. Yes. We divide by a thousand. So 500 divided by a thousand. And this is going to give us our one dimension in meters. One, then we're going to multiple, multiple, multiply that by the other dimension, which is 500 divided by a thousand. It's going to be 0, 0,5. So 0, 0,5 times 0, 0,5. One. Not, not careful, not plus, hey? A half times a half is a quarter. So that's 0, 0,25 meters squared. Are you all with us? You all see what we're doing here? We are working out the area of the tile. Yes, good. We're working out the area of the tile. Okay, and we see that the tile's area is 0, 0,25 meters squared. That's good. Okay, because we need to compare the area of the kitchen and the area of the tile, and they both have to be in meters squared. You can't compare things if the units are not the same. So we've got to get the same units here, comparing apples with apples. All right, so we change the area of the tile to meters squared. It's only 0, 0,25 meters squared. The kitchen area is 39,64 meters squared. What do I do? What do I do, somebody? Come on now. Oh, there's Ben. Ben's on, on a mission tonight. Yes, oh, Ben. We uh, times it by 150. So we're going to times this by 150. I'm sure you were going to say the same thing. We times this by 150 to see what area we get. You could do that. All right. Because the guy says you need 150 of these things. So 0, 0,25 times 150. And we get 37,5. That's 37,5 square meters. So verify with calculation whether this statement is valid or not. Ben, is the statement valid? He says 150 is fine. Is it valid? I think Ben's gone already. Yeah. It's not valid. It's not valid. He says 150 is fine. That only gives you 37,5. Our area is 39,64. It's not enough. It's not valid. You're right. So no. No, not valid. It is not enough. Okay. No, it's not valid. It's not enough. We've got 37,5 that he says. And we need 39,64. All right. So now we're going to move down to question seven. Sure. Let's have a look here. Uh, the tiling company charged 24,795 Rand for the cost of tiles and labor. The manager of the low cost housing claims that the tiling company's quotation is too high, exceptionally high. Verify with calculations whether it's valid or not. Same question over and over again. Verify whether it's valid or not. So we've got to do everything now. We've got to work out the whole cost of this job. We've just heard that 150 tiles is not enough. So we need to know how many tiles we actually need. And by the way, down here it says there are four boxes in a tile. And the question said at the top here that it's 249 Rand per box. There's four boxes in a tile plus 249.90 per box and labor is going to cost you that much that information is going to need to be brought down so what i'm going to say 249.90 per box i'm going to write this here 249.90 per box and there's four in a box and labor costs 8186.09 8186.09 all right so we got to work this whole job out and say, is that charge of 24,795 valid or not? I'm going to give you 
five minutes to do this. You've had practice now. You're getting the idea. I'm giving you five minutes to do this. I'll give you a hint. You need labor. All right. You need to work out how many towels you need. All right. And I'm not going to say any more from there. This question six, this exercise we did for question six is an indication of how you should work out how many towels you need. All right. Just remember our area is 39,64. So let me bring this down as well. This is all information we need. I'll bring this down as well. We need that. So you guys are pretending to be business people or owners of this house and you're trying to check, is this guy's quotation correct? Is it too high or is it not too high? You will do this when you own a house one day. You will do this calculation. It is applicable. It's contextual. It's relevant to you, what's going to happen to you in the future. So start practicing now. You need to check if this quotation is actually valid or not. There's all the information you need. All right. I'm giving you five minutes. I need you guys to work hard now. Great. Eight all the way up to matric. Great. Eight. Great. Ten all the way up to matric. All right. Great. Tens get stuck in there. Elevens. I'm sure you're up to the challenge. But tricks, you have to be getting these questions. You have to be getting these questions. All right. You want to do well? You got to do questions like this. All right. All the information is there. You got five minutes. I can see Chapang is thinking there. He's thinking hard. He's like, hmm, what do I do with this? All right, good. Chapang, good. You keep going. You think about it. <laughs> The lady's like, no, let's not make sure. And the lady pizza is looking at this thinking, where do I even start? Huh? Come on, that lady. You can do this. Where do we start? First of all, you need to work out how many tiles you need. All right. Oh, let's bring down the tile information. All right. Uh, I'll bring this information down as yeah. This is the area of one tile. That's the area for one tile. If you guys are not sure and you're like, hey, Sue, um, should I do it like this? Should I try this? What about that? And you want to ask me, that's fine. All right. It just shows me that you're thinking and you're trying to figure it out. So if you have any questions, what? Guys are getting answers already. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> if you're not sure about something and you want to ask, please feel free. Don't hold your – speak now. Don't hold – your piece. I think, I think that's, what, that's what Kia says. Don't ever keep quiet. Just ask. How are we doing out there? Everyone okay? Or are we sweating? What he saw? Um, sir. Yeah. I'm a bit stuck with this uh, because I said four times two comma four nine because if each box, meaning each is one, right? Yeah. 
So each box, and I said four times two, four, nine, and it gave me 999 comma six. And when so you looked at that, that number, am I supposed? When, hmm? when, when you looked at that number, what was the first thing you thought when you saw it appear on your calculator? The one that appeared on my calculator. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe it's maybe the box, the number of boxes. You think? Did you think it was a bit high? Yeah, it is a bit high. Yeah. Am I supposed to divide it? Yes. By the total area. No, no, no. So you want to? So you trying to? It looks like you trying to get a price per towel and work from mm -hmm. there. So if, if it's two hundred and forty nine hundred ninety per box, and the box has four tiles, how much is it for one towel? So you, you, you try to multiply, you should be dividing. Oh, to get a price. Okay. I think you're trying to get a price for one towel. So the price divide. remains the same for the box. Because if we're dividing, it's still going to get, okay, let me do this. Try that. And then that'll be give you a price for one towel, okay? Thank you. All right. So we've got people saying, what are we doing? So we're working out the total cost to tile this kitchen and bathroom. Okay. So we've got the total area of the kitchen and the bathroom here, 39 Rand and uh, sorry, 39.64 square meters, not 39 Rand, 39.64 square meters. We know that one tile is 0 0.25 square meters. And all this information was answered before and other questions. We know that it's 249 Rand 90 for a box of tiles. And we know that there are four tiles in each of those boxes. <clears throat> to work out the total cost of the job, we also have to add on the labor. So not just the cost of the tiles, but the cost for the labor as well. And we're comparing it to this person saying it's going to cost 24795 Is it going to cost that or is it not going to cost that? That's what we're trying to check. <laughs> There's a lot going, going on here. Guys, but we can uh, we can do it little by little. So Kahiso, what what she's doing is she's going to try and work out the price for one tile, and she's using this information here to try and do that. She wants to work out the price for one tile, and then she's obviously going to work up from there. Okay. We still need to know how many tiles we need for this job. You, you can't get away from that. You cannot get away from the fact you need to know how many tiles you're going to need for this job. And I leave out information. Whoa, look here in the question. I even left this out. It says here, when buying tiles, you need to buy 5% more. Don't forget that. You need to buy 5% more. Takalo, did you also account for the 5% more? All right, you got about 5% more than what you calculate. Don't forget that. I'll write it to you as a little warning. You need 5% more than what you work out. All right, you need 5% more than what you think. You got to include that as well. Another little piece for the puzzle. Mm. All right, so it looks like Ejiso has got a value there. All right, I'm going to start on a path because we can't see the end. We just need to start walking. Uh, sometimes when you go on a long walk, you can't actually see where you're going to end up. But you can see like certain obstacles along the way. You know, you recognize them. So you kind of know you're going on the right track. So you've got to trust yourself and just start walking. Okay, so we've got to start walking. Yes. So what Kahisa said is she said, I need a price for one tile here so let's just follow that path and let's see where it takes us all right so 249 90 per box and there's four in each box four tiles in a box the box costs 249.90 so how much is it for one tile well we need to divide that by four all right so 249.90 divided by four that means one tile will be 62 and 475. Yes, 
should I round that off? Then it wrong. Two four nine ninety divided by four. Six two four seven five. Do I round that off now? Oh gosh, guys, do I round that off? I want to see a yes or no in chat. Do I round that off now? No, thank you, Ben. You do not round off during a question. Okay, good. No, 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 no. Everyone's like, no, don't do it. Good. You do not round off during a question. Okay, so we know how much it costs for a tile. This is a price per tile. We still don't know how many tiles we need. We know there's an area of 39 rand, 39,64 square meters to cover, and each tile is 0, 0,25 square meters. So how many tiles do we need? How are we going to work that out? How many tiles do we need? We've got 39,64 square meters to cover with tiles that are 0, 0,25 square meters each. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, quickly tell me, what must I do? So you have to take the area of the whole place that you have to um, tile and divide it by the area of the tile. All right. Stay with me while we get that answer. So 0, 0,25. So 39, just check your calculation. I'll check on my side, divided by 0 0.25. What are you getting, Emmanuel? Just a second, sir. Just made a mistake. Let me just type it out again. Yep, that's right, sir. All right, right so 158,56 tiles. 158,56 tiles. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, sir. All right. Now, these are tiles, right? You cannot purchase comma five, six of a tile. But just remember that. We're not going to worry about that too much now because there's something I have to do first. What do I do now? I know I need to round to a whole tile, all right? But they say when working out how many tiles you need, be careful because you need 5% more. The 5%, Katleko, thank you. So I need 5% more than this. I need this plus 5%. All right. So what do I do? Show me. Tell me. Somebody. Quickly, quickly. And what do I do? Emmanuel. Yes. What do I do, Emmanuel? I think I obviously muted you and oh, it's gone. All right, anybody? We add it, 167. Fatima's already worked it out. Okay, so you can do the two-step calculation or the one-step calculation like I taught you right in the beginning. It's up to you, okay? Uh, Itabaling, Kia's going to help you out with that now. So uh, you can either say 158,56 plus 5% times 158, comma five six you can do it that way or you can do the short way all right which is just one five eight comma five six times one comma zero five i taught you guys that at the beginning of the year i hope you remember that's a quick one step way to do it so i'm not even going to round off yet like ben said do not round off during the question just add on your five percent which gives you one six six comma four Eight eight one six six comma four eight eight. Now my question to you is: Do I go down? What, what do I round this off to? And I've spoken about this so many times in the last couple of days. Lord help us. What what do I what do I do now? Where do I go? What do I round to? Because you can't buy comma four eight eight tiles, right? So what should I do? What am I rounding to, ladies and gentlemen? You round up. You round up. Yes. But, sir, it's a four. If you're rounding to whole tiles, sir, it's a four there. Shouldn't it go down? No. If you go down, yes, I know the hands are up. Guys are screaming. Yes. You don't go down because if you go down, you're not going to have enough. Right? You're not going to have enough tiles. So you've got to go up. Always. When you're trying to finish a job with paint and tiles and things like that, you've got to round up. Okay, so we need 167 tiles. That's what we need. All right. Now, we need to start paying for these. Okay, so it costs 249.90 uh, per box. We got 167. How many boxes do we need? 
How many boxes do we need? I've got 167 tiles. There's four in a box. How many boxes do we need? How are we going to work that out? Somebody. Anybody. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Can I please ask, how did you get the 1,05? Okay. I don't know the method. So... Okay. So this, this is a very uh, short method to work out uh, a value plus a percentage of that value added on. So I said there's usually a two-step process here. You guys are used to saying 158,56 plus 5% 5 of 158,56. All right? Yeah. If you're used to that, please, Sofiso, don't change it unless you understand this new method. So this new method just says to work out <clears throat> a value plus a percentage on that value, you can just say times one comma zero five because the zero five is uh, this zero five here is five percent. Mm. So you can use this method if you want, but if you're not sure, use what you know, whatever you're comfortable with. So we practice this quite a bit in the beginning of the year with my class, and it works very well. This is to work out um, the value of a number with the percentage added on. Okay. Okay. okay, but you don't have to. You don't have to do that. You can stick with whatever method works for you. So I'm hearing people on chat saying I need to divide by four here, and I'm seeing that the answer. I'm going to trust you. Uh, Forty-one comma seven five. You guys are saying, sir, it's forty-one comma seven five boxes. All right, because there's four in a box. But you say, sir, you can't buy comma seven five of a box. So we're going to round up again to forty-two boxes. Right, and they're 249 rand a box, guys. Can you start to see the end of this? You're starting to see the end of this now, aren't you? So it's times 42. All right, we need 42 boxes, and they're 24990 each. That's 10,495 and 80 cents. 10,495 and 80 cents. Okay, and we haven't rounded off until this point here. We rounded off the boxes. That's it. Like Ben said, don't round off anywhere. Just keep your decimals. Otherwise, this answer at the end is going to be wrong. All right, so that's the tiles, but we still have labor. So the total for this job is the tile price, which is 10,495 and 80 cents, plus the labor. What is the labor? Go all the way back up. Here it is. Yeah, I'm just going to copy. I'm so lazy. There it is. There's the labor. Bring it down. All right. That's my labor cost. So what will the total cost be? We're going to do it together. 10495,8 plus 8186,09. 18 18,681,89. 81 and 89 cents. So is his statement valid or not? Yes, you're all getting it. Is his statement valid? Definitely not. He's trying to make us pay more. Invalid. Invalid, and you can write a statement with that, okay? Not valid, invalid. Don't try and fool us. We know math. We know basic math. We know math literacy. We know what we're talking about. Okay, you cannot scam us. So what's the market location for this question? Ben, it's a good it's a good idea. Um, I think this was, was for seven marks in the contextual exam question that I brought it out of. All right, now, I don't know what you're thinking. And Bianca and Tiamo can put the emojis there. It's absolutely true. It's hectic. It is hectic. But if you know where to start and you start on that path, you'll find the end. Okay. You'll find the end. Please write things down. Write information down as you go. And please also note that I'm putting units everywhere. All right. I'm showing units everywhere. Because if you just write numbers, you're going to get confused. I'm writing units everywhere and words. Okay to help me follow on the path. I've got boxes now. So there's a total value for boxes. 
All right, so I'm writing my units and words all over the place to help me with this question.